The World Health Organization publishes a list of what it considers to be the most important medications to include in a healthcare system. Think of it as a model formulary. One of the drugs that every health system should have is methotrexate, both in an injectable form as well as oral tablets. Methotrexate has many different uses. For example, methotrexate is very effective for rheumatoid arthritis. It's also effective for psoriasis, various cancers, and treatment of ectopic pregnancy. It's also used in very different doses. The tablet, when used for rheumatoid arthritis, might only require 7.5 milligrams per week. However, much higher doses, as used with the injection, are needed when using methotrexate to treat cancer. It's in those situations that we are most likely to have to check serum concentrations. One type of cancer methotrexate is used for is leukemia. Leukemia is a cancer of the blood and bone marrow, and it's characterized by an uncontrolled growth of white blood cells. Patients with leukemia often present with recurrent infections. When their blood is examined under a microscope, many, many white blood cells are seen, which seems a bit contradictory. Wouldn't producing a huge number of white blood cells result in better protection against infection? The problem is that most of these rapidly produced white cells are immature forms that aren't effective for fighting infection. So somewhat paradoxically, these patients have more white cells, but are also more susceptible to infection. In the 1940s, doctors trying to treat patients with leukemia saw that some of the symptoms their patients exhibited resembled megaloblastic anemia. Some forms of megaloblastic anemia could be treated with folic acid. So the natural thing to try was give patients with leukemia folic acid. Unfortunately, folic acid made the leukemias worse. What do you do when you try something and it makes things worse? You try the opposite. You give an anti-folic acid instead. That's what methotrexate is. Without getting too much into physiology, normal synthesis of amino acids requires folic acid. You can see at the top of this image that folic acid is being taken into the cell from the gut. At the bottom of the image, amino acids are being produced for RNA and DNA synthesis. The DNA and RNA are required for cells to replicate. In between is the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase. Dihydrofolate reductase converts the folic acid into an active form that can be used for amino acid synthesis. Actually, it converts it twice, once into dihydrofolate and another time into tetrahydrofolate. At the top of the screen is folic acid. At the bottom of the screen is methotrexate. As you can see, methotrexate looks an awful lot like folic acid. So much so that when methotrexate is taken up by cells, it competes with folic acid for binding to dihydrofolate reductase. This effectively blocks the activation of folic acid and prevents the synthesis of amino acids. You can think of it as being sort of like a lock and key. The lock is dihydrofolate reductase. The key is folic acid. Two things have to occur in an enzymatic reaction. The substrate has to bind to the enzyme, and the reaction has to move forward. When folic acid binds with dihydrofolate reductase, an enzymatic reaction occurs, and the process moves forwards towards amino acid synthesis. So let's imagine that the key is folic acid. It fits in the lock, all the pins line up, and we can turn the key. In other words, folic acid binds to the enzyme, and the reaction goes forward. Folic acid is the good silver-colored key. Methotrexate is the black key. It's similar enough to folic acid that it can bind to dihydrofolate reductase. That is, it fits into the lock. However, it's different enough that the enzymatic process doesn't continue. 
like with this black key, it fits into the lock, but the pins don't line up and the reaction can't move forward. What's more, once this bad key is in the lock, you can't put in the good key. Once methotrexate binds to dihydrofolate reductase, it blocks folic acid from binding to the enzyme as well. In this competition, we want the black key to win. In order to make sure this takes place, we take a page from horror movies. In the horror movies, you have the good girl who is running in the woods away from the killer. Now, I know all of you are very sensitive and I don't want to trigger some sort of panic reaction, so instead of a disfigured killer in a hockey mask brandishing a bloody knife, let's say that the good girl is being chased by a clown. A clown with a briefcase. Because after all, there's nothing very scary about clowns, is there? Anyway, our heroine is running away from the killer clown who is, I guess, going to hit her over the head with the briefcase. So she runs and she runs and comes upon the scary cabin in the woods. If only she can get into the cabin, she'd be safe from the killer clown. But the door is locked. In desperation, she looks under the welcome mat and there's the key. She unlocks the door, gets inside, slams the door behind her, and is safe from the killer clown. Whew. When using methotrexate, we're the killer clowns. We want to stop the girl from unlocking the door. So let's imagine that the killer clown has already been to the cabin, and when the girl picks up the welcome mat, she sees this. Hundreds and hundreds of keys that the clown has placed there ahead of time. Yes, the correct key is in there somewhere. We have to give her a fighting chance after all. But that correct key is mixed in with hundreds and hundreds of fake keys. One of these keys is folic acid. All of the others are methotrexate. The only way the girl is going to escape is by trying keys in the lock. If one doesn't work, she tries another and another. Yes, theoretically, she might find the correct key after a few guesses, but odds are that she won't. If we're the killer clown, we can go take a coffee break, come back later. She'll still be trying keys. She's not going to escape. So one way of thinking about methotrexate is it's like giving the patient lots and lots of wrong keys. The wrong keys fit into the locks, but they won't turn. And while the bad keys are in the lock, they block the good keys from being inserted. Methotrexate binds to dihydrofolate reductase, but doesn't convert. And while methotrexate is bound to dihydrofolate reductase, folic acid can't bind. The net result is the process that leads to amino acid synthesis is disrupted. The cell can't make amino acids, it can't make DNA, RNA, or proteins, and this leads to cell death. In general, the more rapidly dividing the cells, the more susceptible they are to being killed by methotrexate. That's why these patients will often develop lesions in their mouth. The cells in the mouth and in the gut replicate much more quickly than many of the other cells in the body, so they tend to be most affected by methotrexate. So one strategy for treating cancers is to give the patient methotrexate, which acts as antifolic acid. Since cells can't produce proteins, they die. The trick is to figure out some way to kill the cancer cells before we kill the normal cells.